best place to start is a halter and rope when you go into the horse business or you get a horse. And you want to avoid the thick halters, wide web halters, because uh, you can't really create a lot of feel through your hands and the rope with a wide halter. And horses tend to pull against it and push against it. But if you use these thinner corded ropes, with the knots in them, a horse tends to be much more respectful and, and they don't push you around so much and they don't want to pull. And, and then when you do pull, you get a better effect with this cord than you would a wide web when you actually pull on a horse. So that's why we use these kinds of halters and there's a very important way to tie them. Most people tie them wrong, but uh, the correct way is you hold the rope here and the rabbit goes down the hole around the tree trunk and back up through here so that if a horse pulls back you can always push it down and loosen it up. That's the correct way to tie these. If you tie them in this fashion they can pull back and you'll never be able to untie them. Okay. That's something about this type of halter. Ropes, very, very important. It's important that you get one of these climbing thick type ropes that are heavily woven and they have some weight to them. So when you throw a little loop in there, they have a lot of feel and you can feel it all the way up through the halter. If you just get a three strand twisted rope, like you see, on a lot of halter ropes and stuff, they're too light. And when you try to work a horse with the just feel like this, they don't feel it because it's like waving paper in the air. So this is a good signaler, this rope here. Feel the weight of that thing, okay? So that's kind of what you're looking for, is that tight, heavy weave. And you, all right, so when I'm gonna catch a horse, I prepare, it in one hand here, okay? I hold it together like a halter, and I have this rope coiled nicely like this and like this, okay? All in one hand, all right? Now, typically I like to have a treat in my hand when I go to catch a horse because it'll make him want to come to you when you open the gate. As you can see, he's dying to get out, right? So he's making my job. In fact, he's going to open the gate in a minute. You watch. He's a colt we raise, and he's a lover. He loves people. Anyway, okay, so whenever you approach a horse, you never want to approach them if their hindquarters are faced towards you. Okay, and they're pointed away from you in some direction. You never want to approach a horse unless they're your compadre that you've been with for years and they see you but you never want to walk up behind a horse and their vision because they can't see directly behind them if you do you'll get you might you could probably get hurt really bad uh, by surprising them because their first instinct will be to kick when they when they see something all of a sudden behind them so you always make sure they can see you and if the horse is facing away from you do something to make the horse move or walk around walk a wide path around where they can't kick you and catch them. Where do you head for when you catch a horse? You head right for the shoulder and you pet them on the shoulder, the neck and the shoulder. That's the first thing you do. Then you reach underneath their neck, reach over their neck and grab the top of this, slip it on their head, close it down, put that through there like that. Okay, that's how you tie it again and you've got your horse. If he tries to put his head on me, I'm going to push his head away a little bit. And the first thing you do, you, you don't, if you wait more than three seconds, you could lose your horse. So within three seconds, you come up and you capture your horse. Okay, now he's captured. Now I put that nose band on there and he gets it in his mouth because he's a cold. I pull it out. Now I pull it up there high enough, run that through and close it down, okay? 
Meanwhile, keep it out of his mouth. He's a puppy. He's like a puppy. All right? Now, when I'm leading this horse, I'm keeping him at arm's length. I'm not, right, I'm not walking with him. Keeping him at arm's length, and I'm keeping him where I can see him. I don't want him to get behind where I can't see him because he could run me over. Okay. Also, I keep this arm extended so I can protect myself if he tries to run me over. <laughs> we work with a lot of horses that try to run you over. Or you can put your elbow into him, or you, you know, you can stop him in different ways, but don't let your horse get closer than an arm's length, and you should have, I would say, two and a half feet of rope, okay? Whenever you take a horse out of a gate, push it away. Never pull it into you when you come out of a pen. It's the most dangerous thing you could ever do when leading a horse is pull the gate in because what will happen is if he bumps the gate, it will sandwich him and could injure or kill your horse if they react violently. So that's a biggie. Always have the gate pushed away so that it doesn't fold in on him. You know what I mean? Like an accordion. He's a goofball. All right. So I'm leading him and I'm keeping him at arm's length. He's not leading real well, which is good, but you can see how I'm leading him with my arm. And I have, and I'm watching him too as I'm going along. Because I like to know what he's thinking. 